name of that topic is the harvest of rejection. Oh my Lord, the harvest of rejection. Now, for those of you that follow me, uh, this is basically a follow-up from the teaching that I did in 2017 uh, titled The Spirit of Rejection. All right, So you're going to see little similarities in these, but it's, this particular teaching is just taking us on a on another level. I trust you guys had a wonderful week. I indeed had. Uh, I had some uh, sad news this week. Uh, no, last week, actually. Last week, and this was such a tragedy for me, I was uh, droning and my drone crashed in the water. You know, <laughs> you know I, I told DJ that I'd do a little memorial, you know, because <laughs> I was really. <laughs> and I, I know that means nothing to y'all, right? <laughs> but look, yeah. I spent a lot of money on that drone, man. Huh? Hotel Evo 2. Okay, I was off the coast of SN there just, you know, enjoying a beautiful sun, sunny Wednesday. Nice and quiet out there, getting all those beautiful shots. And something went wrong with the software. So it was giving me a different reading on the battery. Next thing I see this thing spiraling out of the sky. Lord, I said, Lord, look all of my hard labor. But I say anyway, <laughs> let me not worry about that. So when Deidre came home from work, she saw me looking so sad. What's wrong with you? So I said, baby, you wouldn't believe what happened. I don't know if I could contain myself right now. She said, what happened? Somebody died? I said, not really. But similar. <laughs> so I said, my drone, my drone went down. So yeah, I probably may do a little memorial service sometime on the week, next weekend. And in, in, in memory... And memory, and that's my top draw. That's the the most expensive one that I have. So uh, my birthday next week, so I might treat next month. Sorry, so I might treat myself to the, the latest one. But other than that, listen, we have had an excellent week. Uh, as you guys that follow me, you know, we did a teaching myself and Isaiah Saldivar. We did a, a a combo package on Tuesday night, and we dealt with defeating witchcraft. Very, very powerful teaching. I strongly recommend that you go on YouTube or even Facebook and type in Defeating Witchcraft by Kevin Ewing or Isaiah Saldivar. And it's a very, very informative and impactful teaching. You know, <clears throat> in my conversations with him, you know, when I thought that sorcery in terms of its abundance was more frequent in the Caribbean, but boy, he had to correct me on some stuff <laughs> as it relates to... Uh, America, and that being his ministry, deliverance, and so on. So as you can see, you know, God is raising up people to empower his people. And what is he empowering them with? Well, like I said in my teaching, you know, according to the scripture, that you, deliverance, is predicated or based on knowledge. And Proverbs 11 verse 9b clearly states that through knowledge shall the just be delivered. It is the information the accurate information that you are taught from the scriptures that you apply that will produce the promises of God. And I said it because a lot of people say knowledge is power. <laughs> I don't believe that for one second. I do not believe that knowledge is power. And you'll never get me to believe that. What I do believe is that the application of the knowledge that you receive will produce power. Because you could have all the books in the world. In fact, you could go to all the colleges in the world and get all the education. But if you do not apply what you were taught, then you are no different from the guy who never knew these things. So the application of the knowledge of God will produce the power or the promises of God that he's laid out uh, in the scriptures. And I was making it very in those teachings as it relates to defeating uh, sorcery, we need to understand what it is and not listen to some uneducated person who has never had a spiritual experience, who don't know what a spiritual attack is, but yet they call themselves some kind of leader and want to educate you from their limited knowledge of what they heard somewhere, so two people talking or whatever, but never re researching these things and having the encounter. And I was amazed to the amount of people that have viewed that particular teaching that we did. And it just shows you the hunger that people have in terms of seeking a remedy for these supernatural occurrences that's going on in their lives. 
So, like I said on my international platform, like I will say now, if you are a leader and you don't believe in these things, then you should not be leading the people of God. You should not. That's like a, a guy come to apply for a mechanic job, but he don't know squat about mechanic. What, what, you are useless. What are we going to do with you? What could you tell us? So if you are a spiritual leader and you dismiss such topics, which is rampant in your church for the moment, I wouldn't even talk about it in the secular world, then you, what you are doing is making your congregants prime targets to be destroyed. Now, why would you say that, Kevin? Well, again, let's go back to the scripture. Let's go back to the laws. The scripture gives us some laws to secure destruction. And it has a lot to do with knowledge. Hosea 4 and 6 said that my people perish. Why? Because they lack knowledge. They do not have the information, the, 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 the education, the learning to fight spirits or evil entities or invisible forces. So our leaders tell them, hey, <laughs> those things only real if you believe in it. Okay? Don't mind those things. Just so you see it. <laughs> you know, don't worry about that. Give us seed and then you can go along. Then, then, then Isaiah 5 and 13 says, My people have gone into captivity or spiritual incarceration or they're limited or restricted in life, meaning that they're hindered from moving the way that God had ordained them to move. Why? What is the common denominator in all of these scriptures? Well, Isaiah 5 and 13 says that they're restricted or they're incarcerated because, again, they lack knowledge. So the constitution, which is the scriptures of the seen and the unseen world, clearly states, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. And that's why I just laugh and just have a field day when I see people paying for a miracle, paying for deliverance. You receive no knowledge. You don't know what is this on you. You don't know how to take it off. And you don't know what to do to maintain your divorcing yourself from it. You, know, you have acquired no knowledge as it relates to what was claimed to be taken off of you because of the fee that you, the invoice that you were given. So what is to stop this entity, this invisible being, from coming back at you? What, what rules did you participate in that caused it to come on you initially? So if you don't know none of that, then what measures do you have in place to avoid, if you actually deliver this, from having this experience again? So the scriptures are clear. Through knowledge, not black back flipping, through knowledge, not running around the church, through knowledge, not paying monies and, and stuff like that, and see it through what is that preacher, what is that apostle, aside from their tricks and fortune telling and tarot card reading and familiar spirits and divination that they participate in, aside from that, when we already finish with, I see God doing this for you. Okay, now when we finish with that, right, when you leave, what could you say you acquired from the scriptures that was given to you that you could fight with now? I know, I think I know this one. I can answer this for you. Child, pastor say, pastor say, pastor, <laughs> not even the Bible, not even God. No, man, through knowledge, listen to the scripture, Proverbs 11 verse 9b, through knowledge shall what? Shall the just be delivered. How is deliverance going to come to you? It's going to come through the acquiring and the application of the knowledge, and that knowledge would be the word of God, let's be clear. And the, the application of the word of God or the knowledge of God. But you can't say you're going to be delivered because Kevin said, or Kevin touched me, or Kevin prayed for me. That's not to say that those things cannot 
be a, a part of the protocol to your deliverance. But what I'm saying to you, you don't want to circle this mountain again. So therefore, don't just preach it before you put your hand on me. What, what, show me the rules. What would be operating here by how I know you ain't putting some extra demons in me? How, what you dealing with? Okay? And this is why I'm wary of people who believe that because of them, you are delivered. They cast the devil on you. Forget the Holy Spirit. Forget God. Forget Jesus. They're the, they're, they're the power behind the power that they use. Uh-uh. Through knowledge. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Let's be clear. And I'm going to say it again. If you feel you're being affected by sorcery, if you feel that someone is working witchcraft on you, if you feel they're working OB on your job, if you feel they got the boss tied up and everybody turning against you, again, put all of that aside. Put aside the no good boss, the unfair supervisor, your no good mother and law them. As far as you concerned, everybody got the problem except you. And this is where, this is, this is the, the piece of knowledge that people miss who are under the curse of sorcery. This is what they miss that causes them to be in this perpetual cycle of failure. And what is that? They don't know the knowledge that look at yourself. If these things are, are governed by me, because the rules say a curse cannot enter your life unless there's a cause. That's what it says. So if that's the rules, this is why you need to know the rules. If that's the rule, because all my life, this is the average person, they're thinking, you know, they're the victim here. Who are they working with you on me? And any Christian who say they're working with you on them and they're working, you should be ashamed. You should be ashamed of yourself because it's speaking volumes of you. Primarily, you are ignorant to the laws of God. The Bible says in the book of Numbers, it says that because Israel was doing what they were told to do, they were following the ceremonial laws and all of the other rules, the Bible says no enchantment, meaning spells, rituals, it says no enchantment, no divination, no hexes, no spells, no voodoo, no witchcraft can work against them. Uh-oh. Wow. All because they were following the laws of God? Yes. So what does that mean? When I choose not to follow the rules of God. So you see now why those who are in the church, those who got all the titles, those who are backflip, somersault, put you in the fickle for body slam you, all this other stuff. Why they're being afflicted? Because they're in a place that are not following the rules. Following their own rules. And God will not honor your rules. He's going to honor his rules. Very simple. So that explains the situation. And he said it. He says, listen, because of your tradition, because of your culture, the way that you do it outside of my rules, then my word will be of no effect in this place you call the house of God. But the day you follow my rules, you will see. When you apply what you've learned of this, you will see the power of God. You will see that those curses got to stand still. Can't touch you. Why? Because you're following the rules. All right? So I'm going to jump right into it today because I got a lot of stuff to cover. Well, actually, before I do that, let me, let me take that back. Let me, let me take that back. Let me, take, let me just do my quick commercials right here because we got a hot topic today. Tico's fashion. Tico's fashion for all of your men, goods, uh, short pants, long pants, short, uh, casual wear shirts, summer shirts, you name it. Tico's fashion is the place to be. The number is 352-3394. 352-3394. They're located on Kent Street. That is at the rear of the post office and diagonally across the street from Scotia Bank. You can give them a call if you have difficulty finding them right now. The number is 352-3394. Mr. Gary Heal and his family will be more than happy to assist you. Pick Hair Beauty Center. Pick Hair Beauty Center. For all of your hair cares and wraps and bonding, short pixie haircut, hair weaving, ponytails, sculpted styles, you name it. Marcia Pickstock and her crew, they're waiting on you. Give them a call at 352 2220 Three five two 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 zero or five three three nine three two six 
533-9326. That's Pick Here Beauty Center for all of you females that want a nice hairdo, nice husband, or you're going on a job interview, or whatever it is, Marcia will be happy to help you. Give them a call right now, 352-2220 or 533-9328. They're located Town Center Mall. Entertainment DVD and Snacks, Town Center Mall also. Their number is 352-6954. 352-6954. For all of your delicious hot dogs, variety of patties, such as beef, jerk chicken, curry chicken, cheesy beef, spinach, vegetables, sorry, vegetable patty, Come on now, they have it all there, a whole variety of them. They also have DVD, movies, snacks, soft drinks, you name it. Give them a call at 352-6954 if you have difficulty finding them. And they would be more than happy to assist you. If you're planning a wedding, especially you international uh, viewers and listeners right now, well, give Reverend Gary Cooper a call at 1242-533-1942. That's 1242-533. 1942 Bahamas Beach Weddings. He also has a website, and that is Bahamas Beach Weddings with an S dot biz B I Z. Or you can email him at C G A R Y four seven three at gmail dot com. All consultations are free, so you don't have to uh, worry about that. He has waived all of those uh, charges as he as you consult with him in preparing for your wedding here in the beautiful beaches uh, of the Bahamas. Then we also have here Rondi Shooterverse. That's it. Rondi Shooterverse. Yeah, this is the uh, newest shoe store that we have here in Freeport, Grand Bahama. They're located at number 9 Forest Avenue. That's number 9 Forest Avenue. And it's just behind the uh, gas station, which is there on Queens Highway. And uh, their number, if you have difficulty finding them, because I know most of you will, their number is 602-7546. 602-7546. That's Rondi Shuniverse. They're located on number 9, Forest Avenue. Those of you who know where uh, Freeport Starter is, right through that corner there. As you ride down, then you will see they have uh, uh, some flags out front there, and then you'll see some green steps that take you in into their beautiful establishment. So that's Rundy's Shuniverse, number nine, Forest Avenue, the number 602-7546. All right, simply the best video. Simply the best, located in the Mayport Milling, their number is 727-1502 for all of your multimedia needs. Weddings, and funeral, office party, private party, streaming church events, streaming church services, also streaming funerals. Give them a call right now, 727-1502. That's 727-1502. GAN Builders, General Construction. For all of your construction needs, you can give them a call at 352-2432 or 533-2064. 352-2432 or 533-2064. I want to thank, listen, last week, as you guys would have known, we uh, had a special where we invited the administration from Freeport Primary here in the studio with us because, like I would have said to you, the Kevin L. Ewing Spiritual Insight Show has adopted that school and we... Uh, made a, well, I don't want to say a plea, but it was giving you the opportunity to assist uh, with some of the needs that they have in terms of books and supplies and so on. I am here to report that the response has been incredible, okay? It has been incredible. A lot of you have called and more than likely probably wasn't able to reach someone, so we're telling you because someone isn't always at that phone, but still call and leave a message, leave a clear message with a, with a telephone number and they will definitely respond to you. That number, for those of you who still desire to donate to the uh, Freeport Primary School, we've had international folks. In fact, there's some folks who are supposed to be shipping some items here also. They were calling to get the shipping information, what they do, 
and how they want to just help the people there. And it's just been so incredible to see how people, and some of them that I spoke to, it was just incredible because they were giving me examples of, you know, ever since they started listening to me teaching on giving to the poor and making the poor a priority, one of the things that motivate them to jump on board with this Freeport Primary School is that they've applied the principles that I taught them from the scriptures and they've seen tremendous uh, change in their lives. The majority of them, and I'm not sure throwing any shade there, said that they have seen a, a greater return in doing that than when they were paying tithe. But that's a different story. We can go there. So they want to now assist with this drive and assisting Freeport Primary School because they know the power of giving. It is principally oriented, and God is a God that cannot lie, and they are definitely seeing uh, what's up. So I want to thank everyone that has uh, donated to Zelle, to PayPal, and for those that have donated to Zelle, I really want you to send me an email, please, because unlike PayPal, I could just email you back because with PayPal, I get to see the email address. So I always respond with a thank you note. For those with Zelle, unless you email me to let me know that you sent something, I would have no other way to contact you. So if you're listening to me now, I, I truly want you to send me an email. I will respond to you expeditiously because I want to, to say thank you. Freeport Primary want to say thank you. And many of those students are going to be very, very happy campus, especially the parents because it's going to take a major, major load off of them. I feel excited doing it because... You know, I know what it's like to, to have some kind of relief, especially when it comes to these things. So definitely we want to uh, push this drive. Remember, if you want to assist the school, you can give them a call right now. For those who are international, the number is one 438 7595 one 438 seven five nine five maybe you locally want to make arrangement to drop off whatever you want to do there whether it be books whether it be whatever uniforms whatever you want to drop there then you can call locally at four three eight seven five nine five again internationally area code one two four two four three eight seven five nine five again for those that have sent stuff zell for the school please please send me an email because I want to respond to you. All of us, myself, the show, uh, Freeport Primary School, are very grateful for you reaching out. More importantly, you're participating in the law of giving that promises you, according to Scripture, not Kevin, according to Scripture, will guarantee you not only a, a return, but like we always talk about Psalms 41 verses 1 to 3, there's so many other benefits, seven to be exact, when you give to others. So I strongly advise you, all right? So we want to thank everyone on the behalf of Freeport Primary School, all right? So far, they've received shoe, okay, I've seen it now. They've received shoe, shoe vouchers, books. Uh, there's a lady, okay? I'm just going to use her last name as Wild Goose, all right? She visited the school, and she made a donation. And she's a retired lady, and she says she was so impacted by the teachings and the, what she is saying for herself, that she's taking, making the sacrifice out of her pension money to a sister school. See, when I hear stories like that, I love it because number one, it's telling me that the teachings of Jesus Christ, not Kevin, the teachings of Jesus Christ are getting out there. But more importantly, for people to make that decision and actually act upon it, that means they believe it. Or at some point they've seen the manifestation of engaging these particular laws. So I'm telling people out there, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to now begin to invest in the life of someone else. When you would have done that, you're engaging a law that now has to work in your favor. All right? So again, we want to say thank you to everyone that is assisting in this venture. And I know that God will bless you. I'm not just saying that just so. God will certainly bless you. And you will see uh, the fruit of your labor. All right? Now, one more thing I got here. The unload coming, right? Noise. <laughs> okay, here we go. The book here by Andrew K. Coakley called Noise. Let me bring up my camera here. So for those of you who are listening to me for the first time, uh, I have an app, Kevin L.A. Ewing, on 
Android platform as well as the iPhones, tablets, whatever. So go into your uh, app store and just download Kevin L. Ewing and you'll probably see me online right now. Plus you'll have access to all of my uh, articles and my blog site and all these other places you can, I have tons of free information there. But right now I have in my camera, this awesome book by Mr. Andrew K. Coakley called Noise. And like I promise you next month, he, I intend to have him on the show. I'm trying to do that as for no later than the second week, but I've got to give him a call. So make sure he's free and everything. So he could come in, you know, really begin to talk about this book and, and we could just go from there. All right. Well, but no more further ado. I really want to jump into this teaching right now. This teaching is stemming from a teaching that I did, like I said, in 2017, and that was called The Spirit of Rejection. Very, very, very powerful teaching at that time, and it's still relevant today. The reason for that is because with this spirit of rejection, it, it permeates, once it's in a person's life, it now begins to control certain parts of that person's life, if not every area of that life. And what I'm about to share with you today is how this spirit of rejection could be working in your life, right? But it is going to be like my original teaching where I was more uh, using it from an individual standpoint. I'm going to deal with families and bloodline to show you that if you don't look at where these things are coming from or rooted or its foundation, then you would spend the rest of your life battling it the reason why is because when you battle it, you battle it from cutting off the leaves perspective. Hence, they will grow back eventually. And this particular teaching where we're taking this is where you go to the actual root or foundation, destroy that. And once you have destroyed that root, then most definitely you wouldn't have this problem anymore. Okay, so today's topic is called the harvest of rejection. Harvest meaning that after this evil has run rampant for so long, I'm going to show you the harvest that it has produced. It has produced. So I'm going to give it to you from a biblical perspective as usual. I hope you have your pens. You must have your pens. You must have your, your writing utensils because we have a lot to cover today. For those of you who are online right now, I would really appreciate if you stayed where you're watching from. I'd love to see so many far from places that are tuning in. State where you're watching from, I would really, really, really appreciate that, all right? So again, today's topic is the harvest of rejection. What does rejection produce? What is the harvest of it? So I want us to go to Genesis chapter 29. Genesis chapter 29, all right? And we're going to pick up from verse 9 to verse Hopefully, to get to verse 35. Genesis chapter 29. This is going to be powerful. All right? Genesis 29, beginning at verse 9. Let's fix this right here. Okay, I'm going to give you some time to, to, to find that while I do my little mechanics right there. There you go. Okay, Genesis 29, beginning at verse 9, says, And while he yet spake with them, or spoke with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. Verse 11 of Genesis 29. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother and that he was Rebekah's son and that she ran and told her father. All right? Now, this is going to be interesting. Jacob, as you would know, is the son of uh, Isaac. Isaac and uh, Rachel, I think it is, right? No, Rebecca. Isaac and Rebecca are two sons, which would have been Jacob and Esau. All right? <clears throat> They're grown now. So Jacob, uh, looking for a wife. And he rolled up 
on his for his cousin. Let's be clear with this now, <laughs> okay? He rolled up on his for his cousin in the person of Rachel. All right. He now began to explain his 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 relationship to her. Blah blah blah. Long story short, they uh, fell in love, and he wanted to marry her. All right. Her father was excited about this because he also knew that aside from the relationship in terms of blood that they have, he knew that Jacob had some skills as it relates to uh, dealing with these sheep and all this other stuff. So not only does he see them as someone for his daughter, but he plays an important role in terms of the economics going on around there, right? So in verse 13 of Genesis 29 it says, and it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. That's Jacob now, run up his mouth, right? And Laban said to him, which was Jacob, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. Okay. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for nothing? Meaning you think I can have you here working and I ain't going to pay you? No, man, I don't live like that. So listen to what he said now. He says, Tell me what shall thy wages be. You you tell me how much you want me to pay you. Set him right up. For 16 of Genesis 29. And Laban had two daughters. Mm -hmm. The name of the elder was Leah and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender eye. That means she was an attractive. All right? She was tender eye. But Rachel was beautiful and well favored. Everybody liked Rachel, especially Mr. Jacob. So, verse 18 of Genesis 29 says, And Jacob loved, circle that word, Jacob loved Rachel. This guy was in love with this woman. And said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel. Thy younger daughter. You don't have to pay me nothing, Mr. Laban. Mr. Laban. Okay? And in, in fact, let me work for you for seven. You could use me for seven years because I love your pretty daughter over there. I will marry her. I love her. All right? Now, just jumping ahead of myself, the custom of that day was that no matter who you love in this family, the custom was the eldest daughter must be married first. However, Mr. No Good Laban did not share this with Mr. Jacob, all right? So Laban said, yeah, you won't work for seven years? Oh, yeah, man, you're a good boy. All right, that's not a problem. So listen to this now. In verse 18, it says, And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give thee to, to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide here with me. He said, He's a good person. Verse 20, and Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had for her. Boy, that remind me when you were in school, when you had puppy love, my Lord, ain't nothing could jack up your reality like puppy love, yeah? <laughs> but anyway, we ain't going to be big. Verse 21 says, and Jacob said unto Laban, give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, and do my seven years, that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Yeah, nobody is. Made a feast now because Jacob now thinking he getting his prize possession, Miss Rachel, who was not the eldest. Leah, her sister was. Okay. So verse 23 says, And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, who did this? Laban, crook itself, and brought her to him, which would have been Jacob, and he went in unto her. Verse 24. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpa, Zilpha, his maid for a handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, this is now Jacob talking to Laban. What is this that thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled or lied to me? So Laban now, in verse 26 said, And Laban said, It must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn, buddy. That don't work like that. Well, it would have been nice of you to tell the fellow that, eh? <laughs> verse 27. He's fulfill her week 
and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven more years. Okay. And Jacob did so. He didn't have a problem with it. So basically he's doing 14 years to get what he really want, which would, would have been, which would have been Rachel, right? So verse 28 says, And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week, and he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. And Laban gave to Rachel, his daughter, Bilhah, his handmaid, to be her maid. And he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also, listen, listen carefully, he loved also Rachel, he loved Rachel, what? More than Leah. Mm. And served with him the seven years. Listen to verse 31, because this is going to be the core of what we're going to do. Verse 31 of Genesis 29 clearly states, And when the Lord saw that Leah uh -huh, was hated, circle that word, hated, despised, rejected, because this is about to change many destinies. Boy, y'all, y'all better hold on today because we got a deep today. This, this, we can shut this baby down today, today. Listen, verse 31 is going to be the heartbeat of what we're talking about. The Bible is clear. He loved Rachel. He loved her. There was no question about that. He stressed that from one. That's why he did the initial seven years. All right. Then he did the, the, the additional seven years for her, even after he was tricked. He loved her, but the scripture says, and when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, she was rejected of her husband. He, which is God, opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. So Leah was not able to produce children. Now watch this, right? Verse 32. And Leah conceived, she got pregnant, and bare a son. And she called his name Reuben. That's the other child now. Now listen what she's going to say. For she said, surely the Lord had looked upon my affliction. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up. What do you mean affliction you're married? What affliction are you talking about? Clearly, she realized that her husband, affection and love towards her, isn't that of a natural a matrimony uh, marriage. She realized she didn't have this man's attention. She realized this man rejected her. He wasn't into her. He's sleeping with her. Because I guess he gives my wife. I can do that. But I feel nothing here for you. Listen to this now. She said, surely the Lord had looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, listen, my husband will love me. So this is the evidence that is proving what I said earlier. That she knew. So she figured, if I give this man a child, a whole child, that's why people say that like you give half a child. And anyway, she gave him a whole child, but still, that did not pull away his love for Rachel, her sister. It did not change him. And when a man, I try to educate somebody, when you, 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 a man or a woman reject you, you better take that serious because what we're about to see here from a spiritual perspective, that run way deeper than what you think. Because if a person reject you, but they still got you holding on, the reality is they're only tolerating you for a specific reason that benefits them, but never you. And they're going on the premises that they know you want them, and they also know that you have a need for, to, for a certain point or whatever for them, so they will tolerate you until that need is met, and then they kick you to the curb. So listen to this, listen to, to, to verse 33 of Genesis 29. And she, which is Leah, conceived, had another baby. She's bringing forth another child. Okay? She conceived again and bare a son and said, Because the Lord had heard that I was hated, or moved the word hate and put rejected there. Because that's what it is. Because the Lord knew I was rejected by my husband Jacob, he had therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. So, so far, she got two children for this man. Reuben the eldest, Simeon the second one, right? And I read nothing yet where he even showing up to show some concern. Right? Because the man had in there, he ain't into this woman, right? Verse 34. And she conceived again. Isn't this what happens in today's society? 
Right? Some women having children think it and they all, they use this method over and over and it fails for every time. But they still do it. Somehow they're convinced that in their case it can work. Even though it has failed, I mean, the whole population of the world failed as a result of it. Who took that rope? So verse 33 says, she, And she conceived and bare a son. And she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah. And at that point she had, was not really kids no more. To that point. So, so far, Leah has three children for a man that only seems to want her to satisfy his sexual needs. All right? And the woman who he really loved, which is Rachel's sister, she is barren at this point. Now, in this case here where she's rejected, and you're going to see this as we go more to the story, he isn't just rejecting her. He is also rejecting the children. And we're going to see this. Okay? So let's go now to Genesis 30 because we're going to see some more kids that she produced before we get into the meat of this. So let's go to the next chapter, Genesis 30. And we're going to read from verse 17 to verse 21. Genesis 30, verse 17 to verse 21, right? It says, And God, excuse me, hearken unto Leah, or listen to her, and she conceived and she bore another son for Jacob. Okay? The fifth son. And Leah said, God had given me my hire because I have given my maiden to my husband. And she called his name Issachar. Now, you may say, now, hold on, how should this be a fifth son? And I only heard when you said Reuben, Levi, and Simeon. Well, she had a maid that her father gave her, right? And... This maid, Zilpha, she was also having children for uh, jo J Jacob, I think, Naphtali and God, I think they were, right? And you know, the sister also had a maid, uh, Bilha, and she also produced children for Jacob. So Jacob had four women that he was having these children with, all right? Now watch this. So she had this next child, Issachar. Verse 19 of Genesis 30 says, And Leah conceived again, and she bare Jacob the sixth son. And Leah said, God had endured me with a good dowry. Now will my husband listen? Now will my husband dwell with me? So that means he wasn't living with her. He, so she's hoping that this child now would make him come home and spend some time. So there's so much uh, forensic evidence in the scripture so far that there was no relationship other than sexual between Leah and her husband Jacob because of this rejection that he had towards her. His heart was, he might have been with her physically while he was having intercourse, but his heart was always with Rachel. Let's be clear here. Hence, he rejected her. So she could have produced 600 children that would have meant nothing to him because he, he, just, he was straight out rejecting her, all right? I'm, I'm putting emphasis on this because when we go deeper, you're going to see the harvest that this foundation that nobody is taking note of, that is being laid, is now going to speak to the future generation. All right, watch this. So he says here, she says here in verse 20, and Leah said, verse 20 of Genesis 30, and Leah said, God had endured me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me because I have bore him six sons. And she called his name Zebulun, and afterwards she bear, she bore a daughter and called her name Dinah. All right? So you see she now she now got a girl. Now out of all of the other, out of Rachel, Bill had Zelpha, none of them had girls. Only only uh, Leah had. Only Leah had the girls, and Leah had the majority of the boys. Okay? Now this this is gonna be awesome now. And I want you to see the foundation. I want you to see this foundation here, okay? Now watch this. Let's go now. Let's go now to where are we now? Let's go to Genesis 34. That's where I wanted to go. Let's go to Genesis 34. All right. Now, now, based on that foundation now, now we're about to build. Okay? All right. So you know all the characters, you see what was happening here, right? All right, now watch this. Genesis 34, we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 16. And Dana, uh -huh, the daughter of Leah, so this is Leah and Jacob's only daughter. This is the only daughter that he have 
amongst all of these women he making up these babies with, right? And Dana, the daughter of Leah, which she, which sorry, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. In so many words, he raped her. Now, you would figure, as a father, when he hear this, look here, this dude can get killed right now. Every We about to shut down the whole of the Hivite country or province or whatever. You raped my daughter? So that's the kind of reaction you would expect, right? But I'm trying to show you once a put listen, women don't understand this, you know. Some men don't understand this too. When a person has rejected you, they're not just rejecting you, you know. They're rejecting everything that, especially if it's no benefit to them. Everything that has to do with you. And that's why you find a lot of women, you find a lot of women who being embarrassed by these men's brought to shame. They're all about fighting other women for these fellas. Don't matter who you fight, no matter what you give him, no matter how you take care of him. If his heart is not with you and you are just a convenience, that's what you will always be to him. So watch this. It says here, after he would have raped her, verse 3 of uh, Genesis 34 says, And his soul, this is Shechem now, his soul clave unto Dana, the daughter of Jacob. And he loved the damsel and spoke kindly unto the damsel. <laughs> this dude is something else. Hey, this is how he take people on a date for his date. He take them out on a date. He raped them. He raped them. That's what he does here. He raped her. And then all of a sudden he fell in love. Hey, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. I raped you. But guess what? I just realized I love you. And guess what? I want to marry you now. Well, this, this guy is sick. Now watch this. Verse 4 says, And Shechem spoke unto his father, Hamor, saying, And you can tell he was a spoiled young man. He tell his father, Get me, not please, get me this dame so to wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dana. So Jacob is aware that his daughter was raped. The problem here is, the daughter is with a woman he despised. So as far as he's concerned, Dana don't mean nothing to him. And you can see this more. This can become so clear right now. So verse 5, Genesis 34 says, And Jacob heard that he, Shechem, had defiled Dana, his daughter. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field, and Jacob held his peace until they came, until they were come. And Hamor, the father of Shechem, went out unto Jacob to commune with him. And the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they heard it. And the men were grieved, and they were very angry because he had done folly in Israel in raping Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to be done. Verse 8 of Genesis 34. And Hamor communed with them, saying, The soul of my son, she shall long it for your daughter. I pray you give her him to wife. All right? Now he's talking to Jacob now. And make ye marriages with us, and give your daughters unto us, and take our daughter unto you. And ye shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade ye therein, and get, get you possessions therein. And she shall say unto, unto her father and unto her brethren, Let me find grace in your eyes, and what ye shall say unto me I will give. Ask me never so much dowry and gift, and I will give according as you shall say unto me. But give me the damsel for wife. Now, what 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 is missing here? No apology. Not sorry for raping your daughter. Not only that. What is really really missing? There is no exclamation marks in the uh, the coming from uh, Jacob. There is no disdain. There's no anger. In fact, he was quick to reason. How could this be? This is your only daughter that was raped. Folks, listen to me and listen to me well. The man rejects her ma, okay? The name is what I'm talking about. People are overseas, he rejected her mother. He rejected her mother, and because of his disdain for the mother, he could care less about the children. And the sons had a problem with this. Reuben and Levi and the rest of them. How, how, Daddy, how could you allow this? But they don't understand. Daddy don't care because your we don't. He don't like your mummy. He rejected the mummy. The spirit of rejection is is dominating the situation. In so much so that 
that's what's governing him right now. So when a person is like that and they reject you, they don't see nothing wrong with the way that they treat you. Mind you, everybody else can see it, you know. But he don't see it. She don't see it. So watch this now. Verse 13. And the sons of Jacob answered Shisham and Hamor, his father, deceitfully, and said, Because he had defiled Dana, their sister. And they said unto them, We cannot do this thing. To give our sister to you that is uncircumcised, for that were that would be a reproach unto us. So what is happening now? All right? Two of the brothers, which would have been Simeon and Levi. This is their sister. And this ain't their sister by Bilhad, uh, Bilhad, Rachel, or Zelpha. No, this is the sister from the same mother Leah. And our daddy could come here and strike up deal with you as if she's some piece of meat or piece of furniture you could just trade after he's defiled not only her, but these dudes have defiled Israel. So daddy, why are you acting? So after daddy left, Simeon and Levi said, listen, there's a new sheriff in town, okay? Now, whatever contract you had with uh, daddy over here, that cancel. all right? Okay, there's a new sheriff, and we got some new rules. So listen to the new rules is, right? Watch this now. So it says here, uh, verse 15, but in this will we consent unto you, if you will be as we be, that every male of you be circumcised. Then will we give our daughters unto you, and we will take our daughters to us, and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. Now, remember now, they're lying to them. They're asking all of the men, if you really want our daughter, because this, this is the new rules, if you truly want uh, our sister Dana, all of the men will have to become circumcised. And if you do that, then the deal will go through. The Bible says here, in verse 17, he says, but if ye will not hearken unto us to be circumcised, then will you take, then will we take our daughter and we will be gone. And their words pleased him more, which was the father of Shishem. All right, verse 19. And the young man deferred not to do the thing, because he had delight in Jacob's daughter, and he was more honorable than all the house of his father. Verse 20 of Genesis 34. And Hamor and Shishem, his son, came unto the gate of the city and communed with the men of the city, saying, These men are peaceable with us. Therefore, let them dwell in the land and trade with us. For the land, behold, it is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters to us for wives and let us give them our daughters. Verse 22. Only therein will we must consent and so much way to be circumcised. So long story short, I will hurry run through it. Long story short, the men uh, did all become circumcised. And the Bible says that Simeon and Levi, okay, which were the sons of Leah, to avenge what they did to their sister Dana, came and slaughtered every one of the men. Now, this is where it becomes extremely interesting, all right? So, let's drop here now to, where are we? Let's drop here to, okay, verse 25. And it came to pass on the third day when they were saw, meaning after the circumcision, that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dana's brothers, took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly and slew or killed all the males. And they slew Hamor and Shisham his son with the edge of the sword and took Dana out of Shisham's house and went out. And the sons of Jacob came upon the slain and spoiled the city because they had defiled their sister. They took their sheep and their oxen and their donkeys and that which was in the city and that which was in the field and all their wealth. Listen to verse 30. And Jacob, listen to this now. And Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, Listen, you have troubled me. Whoa, 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 whoa. This dude raped our sister. And now he wants to strike a deal. All of this disgrace he brought to Israel, disgrace he brought to you, disgrace he brought to our family. That didn't trouble you. That didn't bother you. 
But because we took an exact revenge on them, this is now troubling you? So people, first of all, let's let's break this down. Why did these brothers behave this way? First of all, why did he behave that way towards, uh, you know, Jacob, that is? Meaning that he basically dismissed what they did because of the rejection that he had towards Leah and Leah's children. Now, guess what this rejection did? Because these boys are tired of their daddy treating them like second class. So what does the rejection harvest? I hope you all listen to me. The rejection is now harvesting rebellion. The boys are now taking matters into their own heart because they, I need to show you, daddy, we ain't playing here. We are tired of you putting us in the back, putting everybody else before us. Many young men, as I speak to you right now, going through that, and young women. And what I'm trying to do to you right now is to get you to look at the foundation of these things. You just look at a young man getting shoot down in the streets or some chick having baby after baby and you quick to ridicule and say the young people this and they that. But you never look at the foundation. You never go back. How did they become this way? What were the events that led to this, this, this harvest we're looking at right now? No, we just criticize. We just... Uh, judge and talk mess all day and night nobody look at the, the daddy was never there never mommy carried a load all the time sometimes mommy get frustrated and cuss the child out 24 7 god forbid the ma hated the, the, the daddy for what he did that child can get it 24 7 especially if you look like your pa you have problems so we see the pattern we see where the foundation was laid out but because people are spiritually ignorant, they don't look at those things. They look at what has now come to fruition. But, but you, you, you parents, all of you played a part in this. All of you. And now you got this result today. The spirit of rejection is harvesting rebellion. It is harvesting anger and bitterness. And in this case, even murder. Why the children of their killing up everybody have no regard for human life? My God, what kind of generation is this? The ones you recruited. The ones you parents, you grandparents created. The ones you grandma, you always cursed the boy part 24-7, saying, I'm no good, you're no good pious. He don't check for you, don't check for your mom. Or vice versa. So you think that's gonna make him feel better? You think that's gonna make him go get a college degree and be an engineer and, 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 and send shuttles up in space? No. All of those negative words, all of the mess you were doing, you were building that foundation. And now it has produced rebellion in the child. Nobody will preach that. No one preach that. Go preach that. That's what they preach. Let me bring this baby home to you right now. I can bring this baby right home. Let's talk about the preacher. That's what, let's talk about him. Let's talk about the preacher who wife loved to get on the pulpit when it's time to introduce him to preach and like to talk mess, but he is the father or the husband of one wife. He may be the husband of one wife, but he is the father of many baby mamas. I'm talking to somebody today. And the child who was rejected because daddy don't want to own me because he's pastor and reverend and bishop and pope and all this garbage. And he don't want to bring shame to him. But the scripture says, look Kevin, he that hide in his sin shall not prosper. That's what I'm reading. Prophet I can I listen, I keep telling you all, you know, I ain't your regular preacher. I don't tell you that. So if you're coming in, in this place thinking I regular, you can get your things. So this is what we're looking at. This, these are the blemishes in our society. When you have leaders who mess up, you mess up like everybody else, you fool around, you produce a child from it. Well, why don't you man up now and take care of this child and treat this child like you will treat the ones in your marriage? Hypocrite. Don't you try that. I I'm just sick of it. Sick of the any time and some official thing, everybody all pious and religious, like they have no sin in their life. That time they got 500 babies out there. They don't own 6 million children. I'm talking to you. And the reason why I'm bringing it up because the future is going to harvest murder, hate, bitterness, unforgiveness. Because daddy never checked for us. It was his fault no more. Daddy all about giving speeches, praying for people, baptizing them, doing all this stuff. Wearing these big Superman robes and stuff. 
and will not pay attention to his biological children that he has had outside of his marriage. So the child becomes bitter, just like Simeon and Levi. So bitter that they begin to do things that they wouldn't have done under normal circumstances, such as rebel. And guess what they can do now? They can mean to do stuff to get your attention, daddy. You don't want to pay no attention to us? You dismissing mommy and mommy asking you to buy your shoes and pay school fees? We can embarrass you, daddy. Now let your wife keep going up there saying the husband of one wife. Let her keep saying that. You liar. See, let me tell you something. Our world will not get no better. Not because I say so, you know. Because the Bible says so. If you have leaders that are hiding their evil, I didn't say this, you know. The Bible says, Proverbs 28, 13, it says, He that hideth his sin shall not prosper. I don't care how much church you got. I don't care how big your church is. I don't care how much people respect you, love you. But you are a hypocrite to get up on that pulpit. You are talking about marriage and marriage this and how to do this and don't get divorced and don't, all the stuff you said. And you got a whole tribe outside of your marriage. That, and again, we all mess up. But what I'm saying to you, when you neglect your responsibility, when you hide it, when you live this facade, this fake life, remember the foundation that you're building. So 15, 20 years up the road, when a child become a teenager in their early tweens, all right, and killing up people or doing a bunch of crazy stuff, remember what your role was in all of this. So bringing this right back in now to this no good Mr. Jacob, all right? Mr. Jacob, all right, who dismissed his children, right? Who rejected their mother, Leah, and it is clear that he has rejected them, that no matter who, he was never there to defend them. He was never there to take up for them. Anyone come there and say, your child no good? That's true, I, I agree with you. And why are you saying that? Because I hate their mom. Because I hate their mother, I also hate them. Because I reject their mother, I also reject them. We got too many hypocrites in our society. And I'm talking about the religious leaders. Those who, who engage in these things. Man, be a man. You want to be a man? Then tell them. Listen, I, 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 I mess up on my wife. I got some children. And I'm not going to treat my children on the outside. No different than I treat those on the inside. Man up. If you don't, sir, then you are and parcel to what will happen or what will be harvest from the rejection that you have to split to those children and their mother. Yeah. So now what happens? You hear the rumors now, child, I hear that. says, child, you don't see his nose? His nose big, just like his daddy on. Look at his foot. Look how he's walk. You all this garbage you run over, but, it, but in the church, I don't, I don't say that but Rev now, oh Lord. Don't say those things, Jesus. Right, don't say it. Let it keep going on and let the next generation do it and let the next generation do it. And then when bad things happen, oh Jesus, take the wheel. If my people come cover my name, all this nonsense you run over, but yet you're still feeding the filth that you know is happening. So you're no different from them. You're no different from them. So back here to Genesis 34, Verse 30, it says, And Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, all right, you have troubled me to make me to stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the parasites, and I being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me. Listen to this selfish man. The only person he's thinking about is him. Not what they did to your daughter. Not you taking the side of these rapists and dismissing your blood. He's saying, look what they can think of me. Forget your daughter's been broken. Forget she's been sexually violated. Forget all of that. Because you didn't like her mommy, because you rejected her mommy, you feel it's legal and legitimate for you to reject her now and reject her brothers and whoever else. You will pay. You will pay for that. So he says here, they shall gather themselves together against me and slay me, and I shall be destroyed, I and my house. And they said, should he deal with our sister as like a harlot? You hear the boy say? They ain't backing down. Daddy, I hear all of your foolishness, but I can tell you now, that's my sister. Now you may reject her, but we ain't rejecting our sister. And we can tell you now, you telling us that she shame her more and these Hivite criminals should treat her like a harlot? Boy, daddy, you got to be crazy. 
But watch how daddy's sticking to his guns. Why? Why is he doing this? Because he reject their mother. And anything that come from that woman, he reject also. Which is the same children he assisted her in bringing to the zone. I'm talking to somebody today. So as you can see, what, what is this rejection that this man have towards this woman? And his consistency in maintaining his rejection. What is the harvest? We'll be looking at it right now. We're looking at the harvest right now. You could take advantage of his children. You could rape them, rob them, kill them. That's all right. You can be like, well, you know, God given, God take it away. His sons are telling him, well, how could you allow it? The Bible says he knew. We just read it. Jacob knew that these jokers defile his daughter. He knew. But yet he's waiting for them to strike up a deal with him. As if it's okay. He showed no anger. He showed nothing to say, listen, I can deal with you. None of that. None of that. So what is this rebellion, sorry, what is this rejection doing now to the kids? Watching the seed was germinating all the time now. It's now beginning to blossom now. Well, initially, like I said to you, and like I said in my video, the spirit of rejection, rejection produces rebellion. Whenever somebody rejects you, and especially if you love that person who's rejecting you, you are going to do everything within your power to get their attention. And the first course of action in doing that is to rebel against Things that they hate, you fall in love with, and you cause problem there to, to, to pull their attention to you. Now let me prove this to you. Let's go to Genesis 35. Okay? And we're going to see something here that his oldest son did. All right? Let's go to Genesis 35 verse 22. All right? Now this is about Reuben now. Now Reuben is his eldest son with Leah. This is his eldest son. Okay? Genesis 35 verse 22 says, And it came to pass when Israel, which is Jacob, dwelt in that land, that Reuben, the eldest son, between Jacob and Leah, and Leah, Reuben went and lay or had sex with Bilhah. Who was Bilhah again? Bilhah was the maid that Laban, the father of Leah and Rachel, uh, Laban gave Rachel a maid by the name of Bilhah, he also gave Leah a maid by the name of Zilpha, right? However, let me show you some interesting facts here. Let's go here to, uh, let's go to Genesis chapter 30. Okay, and we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 4. And I'm giving you this because I want to show you some details. She wasn't just a maid to Rachel. She was also a wife to Jacob. Watch this. Genesis 30 verse 1. And we can read from verse 1 to verse 4. And when Rachel saw that she she bear, and when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. Verse 2 of Genesis 30. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, Am I in God's stead? Who had withheld from thee the fruit of thy womb? And so much more. He's saying, okay, I ain't God. I don't make children. I just do my part and will God not do the rest. Verse 3 of Genesis 30. And she, which is Rachel, said, Behold my maid Bilhah, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. So that means whatever children that she have, Jacob have with Bilhah, will be her and Jacob's children, meaning Jacob and Rachel's children. Same thing with, with Abraham. Remember Abraham and, and Sarah couldn't have children. So Sarah says, now listen, uh, Abraham, I don't normally do this under regular circumstances, but I can let you fool around with Hagar. But let me be clear, whatever children you all produce, that's our children, meaning you and me, not all. She's just a surrogate. All right? Now you know that never go well, right? So watch this. Verse 3 of Genesis 30 says, And she said, Behold my maid Bilhah, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. Listen to verse 4. And she, who is she? Let's be clear, Rachel. And who is Rachel? Rachel is the wife of Jacob. So, and, J and Rachel gave him, which is Jacob, Bilhah, her handmaid, listen carefully, to wife. We clear there, right? Now to Genesis 35, 
And let's look at verse 22. All right? Because what we're seeing here now is Reuben is trying to get his father's attention. Daddy, you've been ignoring me for too long. You have rejected me. You've rejected Simeon. You've rejected Levi. You've rejected Dana. You've rejected our mother Leah. What you have caused as a, res a result of this evil spiritual body of rejection, the, the spirit that's coming from it, primarily the spirit of rebellion. So we are rebelling against you in such a way to garner your attention. If it takes shitting you, embarrassing you, that is what we're going to do. You caused this though. So verse 22 of Genesis 35 says, And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in the land, or, Re or Jacob, that Reuben went and lay or had intercourse with Bilhat, his father's concubine, and Israel heard it, or Jacob heard it. So he was aware that his son was sleeping with one of his baby mamas. Not just that, his baby, he had two, he had, because his, the children that uh, Bilhad had, which I think was God and, and, and Naphtali, I believe, okay, which was Reuben's brothers, half-brothers. So this was bringing further shame and disgrace. But why are these children doing this? The same reason these children running mad in your house and doing a bunch of foolish now and on the internet exposing themselves. And why? Why are they doing it? Because the mummy and the daddy who was supposed to be there ain't there. They're rejecting them. They spend no time with them. Kevin, you're talking fool. I'm glad you said it. Let's look at some laws now. Let's look at some laws. Okay, we're coming back here. Let's look at some laws before I go deeper. Let's go to Proverbs because you all know I ain't going to talk unless we got the rules. Let's go to the rules. Let's go to Proverbs 29 verse 15. Proverbs 29 verse 15. What does it say? It says, the rod and reproof give it wisdom. Okay, listen carefully. But a child that is left to himself, uh -huh, he's rejected. The per no one is checking for him. Okay, no guardian, no nothing. A child that is left to himself bringing his mother to shame. I'm sure Leah was saying, my Lord, why are Reuben doing this? She knew why he was doing it. My Lord, why Simeon and Levi kill up all these people? Lord, my sons are serial killers, Lord Jesus. My daughter was raped, Lord. Lord, what have I done to deserve this? You hook up with a fellow who despise you. You hook up with a fellow who reject you. Not just you, but your children that he made with you. You don't have these children for no other man. You want them for him. But his, his hate towards you, his rejection towards you, Trump, love, everything else. He ain't into none of that. So, as far as he's concerned, Leah Trump children are troublemakers. Because as you would see, all of his other baby mamas, he ain't having this kind of attitude with them. And I, it makes sense because nowhere in the scripture did he say he hated, uh, Bill, or Bill Hart was hated, or Rachel was hated, or Zilpha was hated. Nowhere did you read that. What you did read, the only one who was hated here would have been uh, Leah. Folks, listen, I cannot stress this enough here. Life is spiritual. If you don't see life from a spiritual perspective, being guided by the rules of this Bible, I'm telling you, you'll be going around in circles just repeating the same garbage. Oh, Lord, how come this happening to Tom? Lord, why Tom children do not him, Jesus? Oh, Lord, they look like such a happy family. What happy family? Yeah, they live in the same house, but he despises his wife. He cuts his wife out in front of the children 24-7. The children watch that. Mind you, they respect daddy, so they jump him and beat him up or cut him out. But over the years, this seed is germinating in them. And the day is going to come when the seed of rejection is going to bring a harvest. The part which shocks me is that those who assisted this in sprouting this high are shocked. Oh my God, how could these children kill people? How could they shoot this? They didn't quit. Did we come from Christian background? Yeah, you might have come from Christian background, but what foundation did you build that is producing the result, this dislike result that you see today? You play with me. Don't you try that. No, everybody won't play this victim role like they don't know how this happened. You got a bunch of children out there. You take care of none of them. You show them no love. Listen, even if you can't give those children no money, just to tell your children you love them. You know what that does to a child? Daddy love you, you know. No matter what, I kiss them, hug them, show them affection, but you did none of that. Then you compounded by not giving any form of financial support. 
You should be flogged publicly, internationally. But no, we hide these things. You know how the church and stuff go. Oh Lord, you didn't, don't touch God's anointed. Do, do, do his prophet. Oh Jesus. Yeah, oh Jesus, you could say for that. But the same fellow, his same child, who he don't own, or they're shooting people in their head, or they're raping and robbing people. And you got every evil thing to say about his child. But you will never tell him, take care of his child. You hypocrite. You are no different from him. I have no respect for you. You are no different from him. You are an enabler. He could never be no better. Because you can let him preach. You can never sit him down. He could do what he want to do, bully everybody else and tell them how to live their life. But he will never take care of his own. Never. Because everybody in there is delusional. They can't wait for the next conference so the wife or joker could come up there and introduce him. Well, I want to introduce my husband. And let me be clear here. The husband of one wife. Yeah, you won't finish though. The husband of one wife and six million baby mamas. Get it right. I know you don't like this preaching, but that on you. That on you. It's a reality. And why I'm bringing it out today, because it, it is the, the, the trajectory that this has us on, things will only get worse. You have so many bitter young people. And I'm telling you from the, the ones that I sit with, if you, if you hear the anger in these people, when they say, I hate my daddy, and they don't say it like that. They use explicit words to define their, their inward feeling. I hate that MF. And listen, I don't say a word, you know. I, don't, I let them go. Before they kill me. But <laughs> on a serious note, because I, 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 I understand them. And I don't think these people know. See, they're so caught up on being on stage and being in the limelight and being honored by those who don't really know them that they don't know the psychological damage that they're only putting on that child. But they have programmed that child to just be a menace to society. All because you rejected your child. And the harvest is what you're seeing today. Oh my God. So the Bible says that Reuben, the eldest son, went and slept, okay, excuse me, with his, with his stepmother, actually, right. He had intercourse with Bilhad, his brother's mother. And guess what? Jacob knew. Jacob knew that. Jacob knew they read Leah, but his whole defense was, was to come down on his children. Now watch this now. All of this nonsense you see happening, right? Let me show you how hateful Jacob was. See, because I know when you all hear stories about Jacob, you all talk about, you know, when God visited him in the dream. And See, you need someone like me, see, because I can be fair. Yeah, you did some good, buddy, but let's look at some wrongs. You, because what I'm trying to do is not throw shade on them, you know. I'm trying to show you these dudes were no different from us. The same thing happens today. But the Bible is here as an example to see these things that happen to them, how we could avoid or make, it our, make our lives better by not following that pattern. Now let's go over here to Genesis 49. But no, 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 let me go back here. I was giving you some more, some more rules. Remember the first rule that I gave you as it relates to what was happening now in Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 15, part B. And it says that a child that is left to him or herself will bring their parents to shame, all right? Which is exactly what's happening in this case here with uh, Levi, which with Reuben, Levi, and Simeon. They were left to themselves, meaning that the daddy who was the role model for them, he was never there. He he was being this big statement to everybody else and doing all that, but neglected his children. So the scriptures, this is a rule now, a child that is left to themselves shall bring their parents to shame, okay? Now let's look at Proverbs 20, verse 11. Proverbs 20, verse 11. What does it say? It says, every child is known by his or her doings, whether their work be pure or whether it be right. You could tell why Johnny always in the corner quiet all the time. He don't say nothing. He's very despondent. Why Mary always, you know, to herself, very recluse, uh, introvert. Why? Do you mean why? You know why. 
Okay, you, you, don't, you don't think she's tired of going to school and making up stories about her daddy who never visits her, but because her friends are always talking about their daddy, take them to Disney World, buy them shoes, take them to tennis, take them on the beach, and now she has to fabricate stories. Hello? She has to fabricate stories as if her daddy is in her life. So the Bible says, looking, a child is known by their behavior, by their ways. So that means that you are ignoring the signs of the harvest of this rejection that was eventually coming. According to scripture. Rule, law, principle. Let's look at another one. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Let's look at Proverbs 22, verse 6. What does this say? It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is older, he will not depart from it. Meaning that if you were training them by giving them love and affection and paying attention to them and being a real parent. According to scripture, you are laying the right foundation. So you would expect that from the child in the future. The Bible says when they get older, not while they're young, when they get older, they will not depart from that good foundation you put down for them. However, because it's a principle, because it's a law, it works on the next side of the spectrum. So if they're exposed to you ridiculing their mother, or they're exposed to you always disdaining their father, what do you think you're doing? You're setting a foundation where you can live on the court steps, or you would be visiting the morgue to view their body or the funeral home. You, parent, don't blame this on no school, don't blame this on no government, don't blame this on the Bible is clear with the rules. You are the forefront of these children's lives. You could mold them based on the scripture. But you let your personal view and how you feel towards a, the child parent or the mommy, the daddy, and you now will spite the daddy. You don't want you because you will not see these children. Oh, let's see how well that can go. So when the children start rebelling against you now, mommy, because you kept, listen, you listen, a child can love, no matter what you tell a child about their parent, the child loved their parent. And it is unfair that you as a grown adult would put poison in a child's mind because things didn't turn out the way you wanted it to between you and that man or you and that woman. You are a nutcase. You, you are a selfish fool. You, you, you who grew up in a similar situation should not want your children to, to, to follow this pattern. You who grew up with loving parents, or, 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 or where you grew up in a, in, a, in a home with mommy and daddy, you should want this for your child. So why you would have had the opportunity to have that, but you can spite this man or spite this woman. You're using this child to bring pain for the other. Don't you realize you're hurting this child? But more importantly, you're setting a foundation that you're going to pay for later. Where the child will come to age, children are not stupid. When they get older, they can realize, you kept me from my daddy. You kept me from my mommy. You think they're going to award you? You think they're going to go to the plaque or the award store and have a thing make up? Oh, this is for you, Mr. Kevin Ewing, for really downing these children, mommy, and blah, blah, blah. Here, you have this award. The children love you because of this. Nonsense. And that's why I cannot see people, to me, people who are like that, who use children to get, a, to go, to, to, to hurt the one who they have these children for, you are a fool. Let me be clear with you right now. You are, let me take that back. I'm, 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 I'm wrong. I shouldn't say that. Let me say this. You are a super fool. I don't want to deprive you of your accolades and credit. You are a super fool for you to take the rejection, I don't care what this man or woman did to you, that between you all two, it should never leak over into the life of that child. Never. If that's that child, daddy, whether he's a pastor, whether he's a reverend, whether he's a police officer, that's the child, daddy. Now, what you all two done do to bring this child here when you always doing wickedness? The Bible say whatever was done in the dark is coming to light. Scripture living itself out. But don't let the child go through life not knowing who their daddy is. Because you're trying to hide something here. No, man. No. No. And the pre whoever preacher doing that right now, you will not be seeing no heaven. I can tell you that right now. God, but you will not go into God if you, the scriptures are clear. Probably you on. Hold on, baby. No, 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 no. I see what you say. The husband of one wife. Now, hold on. Let's rub this over here. Let me rub this up. The husband of one wife.
and the pastor of many baby mamas. That's what you need to put there. That's what you need to put there. Okay? So we see you working on trying to fix things now. Own them children. I don't care how old they are. Go and apologize to them. Tell them I was wrong. I was selfish. I only thought about me because I figured this would have been a disdain to my character. When the truth was, it, it was worse now because I, re I rejected you. Trust me. They might be a little resistant at first, but they're going to appreciate it later. They're going to see you as man or woman enough to man up to your mistake. But you're the child until he's 40, going on 50 now, and you passing the child straight like the child look, the split image, you all look like twins. No, it's wrong. It's wrong. It is not right. It is not right. And too many children, uh, uh, their lives are being jacked up as a result of it. So check this out. Let's go to, let's go to, to uh, Genesis 49, right? Let me show you how no good this, this Jacob do this. How petty he is. And that's what it is. When a person, when a person full of resentment towards somebody else, full of rejection towards them, they become petty. They don't ever forgive. They don't let go. Any opportunity they have to whoop that person with. Over the same thing would happen in 1970. 51 years ago. They can remember that freshest day and find another way to beat you across your head. Boy, you, you in bondage. You are in bondage. You are in bondage. Check this out. Genesis chapter 49. I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 7, right? Jacob, this no good Jacob now getting ready to die, right? Now you would figure on his dead bed he will make his wrongs right. All right? And a lot of preachers go into hell if they don't make it right. All right? You go if make it right by saying what you did and tell no children you're sorry. You are on your way to the, your fellow preachers ain't going to tell you that. But I can tell you that because me and you ain't got nothing in common. Go and make it right with them. God is speaking to me today on this radio. And not just here locally, but throughout the world. Preachers listening to me, they always do. If you have made children outside of your marriage and you do not recognize them, you do not want to take a blood test, you do not want to take a DNA test to prove that you will, you will not enter God's kingdom. Because you're hiding your sin. So the Bible says here, for this no good Jacob, even on his deathbed, he, 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 he wasn't satisfied that he deprived his children with Leah of a father. He wasn't satisfied that he made a life a living hell by showing them in every aspect of the world that they meant nothing to him because of their no good mother. Watch what he can do. He's dying now. He will leave some curses on them. Watch how no good this dude is. So in Genesis 49, beginning at verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in your last days. So this is where the custom was where when the, the patriarch of the family is about to depart from time into eternity, they now begin to speak life over their children, right? But watch what this dude can do with his authority in this area. Verse 2 says, Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. So all of them now come into daddy dead bed. Now clearly the children still got some love for him. Because they actually come in. Some children say, man, look here. We don't care if you die. You never check for us. But even in this is showing that they're still demonstrating I'm reaching out to daddy again. Watch how daddy is going to reward them. The ones with Leah that is. Watch this. Verse 3 of Genesis 49. Reuben, this is the eldest one. This is Jacob now speaking to Reuben on his deathbed. He says, Reuben, because he's now supposed to speak over him what God's original plan was for his life. So he's now going to come in agreement and reinforce it in, in Reuben's life. And he starts out doing it. So in verse 3 of Genesis 49, he says, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength. The excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Now, listen, that, that's big in him, right? If I know Reuben was just, I mean, you would think he was a hyena. All you could have seen was molars and canine. He just skinned all that. He finally showed me. You love me. It was late, but I appreciate it anyhow. Yeah? Watch what's coming next. So he says, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength. The excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. He switched up on him on verse 4. However, 
Remember, this dude is dying now. He have the he have the opportunity to make it right with these children. Watch what this no good dude can say. Verse four says he says to Reuben, Reuben, forget everything I just said to you. You are as unstable as water. You shall you will never excel in this life. Oh my lord, man, you reject me all my living days. You are about to leave this planet and you are leaving here with hate. You are leaving here with bitterness all because you didn't love my mother. All because you rejected my mother. You see the need to levy curses on the children you had with her. Boy, you, you belong in hellfire. In fact, hellfire is too good for you. You're all reading this, right? You're, you're, you're see, listen, I am not uh, 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 adding anything to this. This man, Jacob, right? You, he did not do right by his children while he was existing on this planet. He is now leaving the planet and the man is levying a curse on his children. My Lord, what kind of devil this is? So he says to Reuben, he says, he says, you are as unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. Now you can tell him why. Because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, and defilest thou it, he went up now. What he said is because you you gonna mess with my little sweetie, my little side piece. Not why you did it. He didn't say, son, I forgive you. And I know why you did it. Because of what I did to you. And what I did to you. No, 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 no. Plenty preachers, you're listening to me right now. Okay, and this and this is only for those who would fit. Whoever the cap fit, uh 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 it's for you. Uh, OJ them say, listen, if, 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 the, if the glove don't fit, then you must acquit. So if it don't fit you, then you acquitted from this. I am, I am trying to help you, you know. If you have fathered children outside of your marriage, whether you are a preacher, whether you are a, a judge, I don't care who you are, those children have a right to their father. Those children have a right to know who you are. Those children have a right, even if you didn't financially support them, just wants for you to say, say, son, daughter, I am sorry. What I did to you is, is inhuman. It, it, is, it is not a character trait of Christ. What I have done is evil. I apologize to you. I apologize, uh, 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 Tom. I apologize, Mary. I neglected you. My children and my marriage went to school. They had the support of both parents. They had no need for nothing. And I, I was selfish. And what I did, and I never did it for you. I want, before I leave from time into eternity, I will make it right. Whether you accept my apology or not, I just want it to be clear. Your daddy is sorry for what I, what I did. This child have children now, which are your grandchildren. Look how far you allowed this to fester. Look at the harvest. Daddy, who is grumpy? Why talking to someone today? I, I talking to somebody today. You listen to me, y'all, 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 y'all better repent. Y'all better repent. You could see all the sin in everybody else's life. You see this one over here. Uh, smoking grass and drinking liquor. You see this one over here who ain't under your covering. You see this one over here who you're spiking because they ain't giving you no seed. You can see all of that. Okay? And all of this activity going on in your life, all of this hypocrisy, all of this wickedness going on, you think God ain't see that? Huh? You think God ain't looking at that? Wake up. Wake up. And especially the black churches. Stop. Listen, if you are covering your pastor evil, you are equally as evil as him. The Bible tells you that. The Bible is very clear. Romans chapter 1 verse 32. Not, even, not only those who do the evil, but those who enable them, those who approve them, those who encourage them shall be equally punished. That's what I'm reading. God see you as a part of the problem when you endorse mess like that. And I am angry about it because I sit with too many young people filled with anger and rage. Don't see no hope for the future because they have no mentor in their life such as their parent who should have been there to guide them along the way. Instead, they're enjoying their lives with their little four no more and neglect, dismiss, just like with Jacob. They're, they're blood children. God will punish you for that. You're probably suffering now because of that. 
He that hideth his sin shall not prosper. I hope you hear it. The Bible says, if you regard iniquity in your heart, he will not hear you. I hope he wasn't praying to God because he wasn't hearing you. When you got this evil that is active by rejecting, neglecting your responsibility, your blood children, talking fool, and send your wife to me because I got a new script for her to read. Yes, he may be the husband of one wife, but the pastor, or whatever he is, of many baby mamas. Get out of here with that nonsense. Get that garbage out of here. I will never endorse that filth. Repent. What kind of example are you? Step down from that pulpit, you hypocrite, and make it right. Show us the man in you by making it right. Got the poor child depressed. Huh? They can't even conduct sensible relationship because they're so messed up mentally for what you did, Mr. Selfish, Miss Selfish, whoever you are. So he didn't end there with Reuben. This, this spiteful man, this, this hateful, petty man who couldn't get past, okay, he who couldn't get past his rejection towards Leah now begin to, to do a whole lot war against the rest of her children. So after he done on the destiny of Reuben, watch this now, he now come to Simeon and Levi. Verse 5 of Genesis 49. He says, Simeon and Levi are brethren, instruments of cruelty, but why, sir? Why? Were they just stupid little boys who had nothing else to do and just went about killing people? What was the genesis? What was the beginning? What was the foundation? You, Mr. Jacob, you rejected the mummy. You rejected the children. So the children went into the mode of rebellion. They became rebellious because this is what rejection does. Rebellion, sorry, rejection brings forward the spirit of rebellion. It brings forth the spirit of bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, murder, as you would have seen. Yeah, this is the generational curse that Mr. Jacob caused to happen. So now he's about to, to, to shut down these boys' life. So in, in, in verse 5 of Genesis 49, Simeon and Levi, our brethren, instruments of cruel, cruelty are in their habitation. Oh, my soul, come not thou into their secret. He said, I even join in myself with the nonsense you all did. See, because they didn't know that daddy knew that they were the ones who killed the guys in Shechem. Jacob knew but never said anything. Right? And when I say never said anything, publicly. They all knew who did it. I mean, Jacob knew they did it. But I mean, publicly, he never went out there and said, oh, yeah, my, my. no, he didn't do that. Because again, as you have seen in the scripture, he was kind of like, he didn't want people thinking at him a certain way and looking at him with cross eye. Always think of selfish people, only think about them. So watch this now. He says in verse 6 of Genesis 49, O my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly. My honor be not thou united. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. So he's justifying his selfishness, his rejection of them. He says he don't even want to share his honor with them, nothing with them. He's justifying that because of what they did. But he never sees himself as the origin of all of this. He didn't end it, you know. Watch what he's going to do next. Remember, he's dying. He's now about to invoke a curse over them. So watch this. Verse 7, listen, what he, listen to what he's saying to his children by Leah. Verse 7 of Genesis 49. He says, curse be their anger. So who is he talking to? Simeon and Levi. The daddy is leaving the planet. The daddy is have yet to say he's sorry. Have yet to apologize for the filth that he did. But what he's doing instead is, is, is giving a whole cadre of reasons why he have the right to say what he's saying, why he's saying it, and he's going to now put the icing on the cake by leaving a curse on Simeon and Levi. He doesn't curse my man or Reuben out. He says, curse me the anger for it was fierce and their wrath for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. What does that mean? That means you ain't going to escape this curse. Remember, they called Jacob their father, but Jacob was also called, all the Hebrews were called Jacob. And when they went over, they became Israel. So he says, not only will you be cursed now, children of Jacob, even when my name is changed to Israel, you can be cursed over there too. You ain't escaping this. But now let's look at where this all, let's go way back to him and, and, and Leah, right? All because he hated this woman and rejected her. Still giving her babies. 
But he ain't, he ain't checking for them. He can think and he, 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 he give them some, some sheep and goat and so on, but don't call me no daddy, don't come around me, don't ask me for nothing. Don't tell me to take no ball game or anything like that, right? He leaves a curse on them. This curse on Simeon and Levi, let me show you how this, this harvest of rejection is now going forward in the future. Levi, guess who came from Levi? Guess, Moses. Moses came through the lineage of Levi. Moses, uh, uh, Miriam, and their brother, uh, what's his name, the high priest, Aaron. Now we begin to see this trait of murder in Moses and anger and rebellion and resentment. When God told him to strike the rock, he, 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 the God said, speak to the rock, he struck, struck, hit the rock. What, Moses, where, the Bible says, according to Numbers 12, verse 3, Moses is labeled as the meekest man on this planet. But we see a cadre of instances where this man demonstrated not just anger, but murder. He murdered one of his fellow Egyptians when he was over there, okay? He was uh, angry with the children of Israel when they were serving at the foot of Mount Sinai when uh, Aaron melted all the jewelry and made the calf. He came down in such anger, he broke the Ten Commandments. He took the, the calf and grinded it down to dust and mixed it with water and made them drink it. Okay, he stormed out of Pharaoh's castle after Pharaoh was being so difficult with him. God tell him, speak to the rock. He ended up, boy, where you get all this anger from? Where you get all this resentment from? Where you get the spirit of murder from? Well, let's go back. See, nobody wants to check the trail that led us here. Let's go back in the family bloodline. Let's go back. Let's stop right here to Jacob and Leah. That's where, where the foundation was rejection. And look at what it's spawning. It didn't end there. Uh, uh, Aaron, who was Moses' brother, had a son. Uh, his name was Elias, I think his name was, right? He had a son named Phineas, right? You remember him, right? Phineas, in Numbers 25, I think it was, after the children of Israel now, was now sleeping, was leaving their wives and having sex and intercourse with the Moabite women. And one of the uh, Israelite men brought one of the Moabite women and went to his tent. Aaron's grandson, Phineas, rose up with rage and anger. Remember, they all come from the tribe or the lineage of Levi, who Jacob cursed with the with, with, who, who Jacob cursed with anger. He rose up with great anger and indignation and went and stabbed the fellow Israelite along with his concubine from Moab. See, when you connect, now see, now people who are looking at it right there, oh my Lord, that's good, he killed him because you know he was defiled and blah, blah, blah. No, that's true. But you see, if you don't know the history, if you don't know the rules, and every week I tell you this, if you don't know the laws and the rules and just preaching foolishness, you will, you will always succumb to seed sowing, you'll always succumb to covering, and all of these things will have nothing to do with the Bible. When you look at the rules, when you do your research, when you work your way back down to where it all began, now you see why these things are happening. All right? Now, so far, I've told you about this no good Jacob and brought you all the way up to his deathbed. And even in his death, because of his bitterness and resentment towards Leah and her children, he's now executing evil on the children before he departs the side, right? But you know what? It didn't begin with him and Leah, you know. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's, let's go back now to Genesis 25. You can see something right there. Let's go to Genesis 25. I'm telling you, you will make sense out of anything. Follow the trail, but go backward. Go back through the lineage. Go back, and you can see why these things are happening. People ain't lazy because they lazy. People ain't good for nothing and cussers and fornicators and liars and deceivers. No, there's a history to what seemingly is a mystery. But if you don't know the rules to track these things, then you will be just as confused as, to, as they are as to how they end up in the situation. So let's go to Genesis 25. Genesis 25, okay? And let's look at verse 28. Because now you can see some, some favoritism here. All right? So Genesis 25, verse 28 says, sorry, let's start with verse 27. It says, And the boys grew which was Esau and Jacob, all right? And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in the tents. 
verse 28 of Genesis 25. And Isaac, listen to this now, and Isaac loved Esau. Mm. Now, what didn't you see there? You didn't see where Isaac loved emphasis on Esau and Jacob. You didn't see that. You didn't see that, right? Watch what you will see, though. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But, but, Rebecca, which was their mother, loved Jacob. Not Jacob and Isaac, just Jacob. So we see the Genesis here now. Where did Isaac get this, this way from? What, why was he so selfish? Well, as you see, one parent is doing more for the one that they love and very little for the other one that they don't feel the same way about the one that they love with. So Isaac loved his son, who was the eldest, Esau, and the mother loved this other boy. Okay, now watch this. Let's go to Genesis chapter 27 now because we can get some more meat on this. I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 13 very quickly. And it came to pass, Genesis 27 verse 1, And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, or he was going blind, so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, My son. And he said unto him, Behold, here I am. And he said, Behold, now I am old. I now, I know not the day of my death. Verse 3 of Genesis 27. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapon, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field, and take me some venison, and make me savory meat, such as I love, and bring it to daddy, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. So just like Jacob, who was supposed to leave a blessing on his children before he died, guess what? This uh, Isaac is doing it now, but he's doing it to the eldest because the eldest one had the birth right. He was the one first in line for whatever the parents had, right? So he sent Isaac because he loved Isaac because of this venison. So he said, now go get it because daddy getting ready to bless you before I roll up over here, right? Now watch this now. In verse 4, it says, and make me savory me such as I love and bring it to me that I may eat that my soul may be blessed before I die. And Rebekah, the mother that is now, who loved Jacob. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spoke to Esau, his son. Not their son, his son. You hear that? <laughs> and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. And Rebekah spoke unto Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savor me, that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now, therefore, my son, obey your mummy voice according to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father, preadventure or suppose, will feel, feel me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, mummy, and I shall bring a curse upon me and not my blessing. Now watch this. Because she loved this boy so much, and because she wanted him whom she loved to get the blessing, listen what the mummy is going to say. And this is when somebody loved their children, not despise them, not reject them. So listen what my girl can say. Verse 13. Of Genesis 27. And his mother, listen, his mother said unto him, Upon me be the curse. He, in so much words, is if he can curse anybody, son, I love you so much, I am going to take this curse on me. You don't hear this? Did you see this kind of attitude with Jacob? No, no. But yet he couldn't display it to his own children. Why though? Because there was a divide in the family. How could you love this one over here more than you love the next? You think children's stupid? You think they ain't gonna figure it out? So you, you're setting the seed. So here it is. Rebe See, we ain't looking at it from this perspective here, you know. We ain't looking at this. Rebecca and Isaac, they were the real foundation as to what Jacob became and how he portrayed his life, how he displayed when he began to have children. How he was born, he come from a background where you love this set, but you despise this group over here. 
Boy, listen, whoever listening to me today, listen, you better ask God right now to break the ancestral and generational curses of favoritism in your family and deceit. You, you understand? And the way that's going to happen, you got to expose the known evil there now. Don't cover this up no more. You keep covering up and you get no better. It can get worse because the next generation, you, you're passing the baton on to them to do worse than what you did. Jacob did worse than what his mommy and daddy did in terms of uh, one loving the next child more than the next. No, you got to break this nonsense up. Shut this down. Stop calling yourself a child of God and prophet as evangelist and bishop and pope and all these things when you've got all these hidden secrets in your life. I can be clear with you. Proverbs 28 and 13. He that hideth his sin shall never prosper. If you regard iniquity in your heart, God is not hearing you. I don't want you praying for me. If I hear you got outside children and I hear you don't take care of your children, you could but I could have been dying in the hospital. And they if you was the last resort, well, Jesus received me because he ain't praying for me. You need to deal with what you're dealing with. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your knowledge. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for opening up our, our eyes that we were blind to these things over the years. These things were dismissed. These things were never taught to us and broken down to us so that we can see the reality of what we're dealing with because one day we got to stand before you and somebody taught us this or not. This is going to be brought up on the day of judgment and you're going to refer us to the scriptures, your constitution, and it is not your problem whether or not we read it. We should have read it. Because you said to study to show ourselves approved. You said that we must work on our own salvation. So there's no excuse that we could give you to circumvent your judgment. I pray everyone under the sound of my voice who have, who have children, whether inside or out of the marriage, and you have rejected those children. You have, you have, you have taken favor with one set of your children and, and, and dismissed them. You have put that seed of rejection in there. Now you see your family disarray, the, the, the siblings so speak. They, all of this you did. You did. You've created this. When they were children, you trained them in this way. And now they're producing something you dislike. I pray right now that the Lord of all glory will break the spirit of, of rejection, destroy the spirit of, of rebellion and bitterness and anger, that God the Almighty will bring some kind of uh, 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 intervention into that family. Father God, their, their, their parents out there, and, and especially in the Bahamas, where, where they honor their sons more than they honor their daughters. The sons could do what they want, do, don't work, don't contribute, don't do nothing. And, and the, 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 the mothers and those praise them and despise the daughters who try to make something out of their lives. Father, remove the scales from these people's eyes because these people don't understand. The devil have them totally fooled. I pray right now, Lord, that you bring restoration and peace into these families peace into these churches and, and expose the, the wickedness, the deception, the wickedness on these pulpits. Expose them, Jesus. This is not what you were calling your house of prayer. Let these people man up to what they did and stop rejecting these children. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. Father, we praise you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, folks, that is it for me. Yes, you can see I was a little passionate today because I tired of this. Okay, <laughs> so next week, next week, we are going to be back here. God spares life at 12 noon to 2 p.m. again with another powerful teaching. It is my advice to you to go over this, especially those of you whom this teaching is speaking to directly. You could cuss me all you want. You could run me up, but it ain't me who can judge you. It ain't me you got to stand before. It ain't me when you die, you stand before the Almighty, not Kevin Ewing. But you cannot say you didn't hear the word of God. Now, what you do with it, that's totally on you. So until next week, God bless you.